Greetings all. For this video I'm going to be corrupting a Primaris Assault Intercessor into a Berserker of Corn. Not entirely canonical, but very heretical and that's all that really matters with Chaos in the grand scheme of things. Now, this would have been a lot easier with a regular Chaos Space Marine for a base, but I'm all out of those and like to make life harder for myself sometimes, so I'm going to start with an Assault Intercessor. So to begin with, I'm going to be adding some trim on some of the armor plates of the legs of this Assault Intercessor. Now I'm doing it in pieces because it'll be a lot easier than trying to do it when it's all stuck together. So the followers of Chaos have a habit of adding some rather nice looking trims to their gear, usually accompanied by spikes. And to do this trim, I'm going to take some epoxy putty. In this case, I'm using Milliput, whereas I normally use green stuff. And I'm going to mix the two colors together until they are thoroughly mixed. Then. I'm going to roll it out into a very thin sausage. This sausage can then be pressed against the edges of the armor plate using my tools to poke and prod it into place, trim the ends and then flatten it out a little so it looks a bit more trimmy and less of a sausage. Once this has been done I can then take a pointy tool and make some little indents in the trim so it's not all boring and flat. This trim piece took quite some time as I'm not that good at making these small things with the milliput and it is much softer than the green stuff I'm used to working with. Hence the reason I only did the bottom of the leg plates. I feel doing all of the edges would be better, but this was a quick test. Maybe I'll do it again properly at a later date. For the knee of this left leg that I'm doing here, I'm going to add a skull with an extended open jaw to make it a little bit more chaos looking. And for this, I'm going to crack open the Citadel Skull Kit for both components. The first step for this is to remove the back end of the skull with my clippers to give it a flat surface to stick to, and to flatten the knee a little with my knife for the same reason. Plastic glue can then be used to add the skull to the knee, and I can position it before leaving a short while to set whilst I move on to the jawbone. I'm going to attach it to the leg much lower than the skull and join the two with some milliput to make an extended screaming jaw. But to do this we will need to be some adjustments to the ends of this tiny little jaw here as it has these little nubs that will poke out if it's not flattened out a little. Using my clippers I could trim these off and the jaw can be attached to the leg in an appropriate position. With some of my leftover putty from earlier I could take a minuscule amount and make a tiny sausage. This can then be placed between the skull and jaw and squidged into place using my tools to fill out the missing piece of this extended jaw. This step could then be repeated on the other side of the jaw to finish it off. It might not look much now, but paint can hide quite a bit. And here's one I prepared earlier. The right side, I did the base trim the same as before and let it set, then took some little triangles of putty and added them to various parts of the trim and armor to give it some nice chaosy spiky bits. Not amazing, but definitely passable. For the chest piece, I will start by removing the Aquila with my knife, carefully cutting it a little at a time until the chest is flat, and then using a scraping motion to smooth it out. Now using some putty, you could add some trim and spiky bits like we did with the legs, but I am going to have this guy be a squad leader. So I'm going to grab this chest piece here from the Corpse Grinder Cult Necromunda Gang. For this to fit, there will however need to be some adjustments to both this part and the chest plate. Using my clippers, I'm taking off the top part of the Necromunda piece and going to be saving it in my bit box. Can't waste a nice spiky bit like that. With that done, I could compare the parts to see what needs to be taken off before again using my clippers to begin to trim back the chest piece, starting with the gorget area, leaving a little of this in place to join the new piece too, and using my knife to just clean up the area around it so it has a nice flat surface to join onto when we come to gluing. After a little more comparison, I noticed that it would need a bit more cutting to the chest piece for the two to fit together. This was done with my knife, taking a little at a time and comparing often, as it is much easier to remove the plastic than it is to add it back. A few trims here were also made to the Necromunda piece as well. Sadly, one of each of the side spikes had to be removed in order for the piece to properly fit. I also decided that the teeth-like bits at the top of the new gorget would probably get in the way of the helmet later on, so I trimmed these down also, shaping them with my knife. With all this done, I could then add some glue and attach those pieces together. 
A real good hard squeeze will help keep them together nicely and squidge together better as the glue melts the plastics and really helps fill in some of those little gaps here and there. With that chest piece done, the body can then be glued together as normal and I can turn onto the arms. So for these, I'm going to be using more pieces from the Corpse Grinder Cult. These gloved hands with chunky chain axes will do quite nicely. For the left one, I will need to flatten out the shoulder a little with my knife to give it a good connection point. I didn't flatten the entire shoulder out though, as it would have shortened the part way too much and lost most of the shoulder. They're a little bit of a strange shape due to the way they connect to the Necromunda bodies. But adding some glue, I can attach it to the body using the flat area I just made. There's quite a gap at the bottom of the arm, but this can be fixed up with some putty later. Not until after doing the same with the other arm. As usual, the putty is made into a small sausage and poked into place. I didn't put too much effort into making this too pretty, however, as it will be covered up mostly later on. Now the Assault Intercessor I am using as a base was holding his gun and therefore the holster is empty. To rectify this, I'm going to trim a handle from a spare holster I have and glue this into place. It probably would have been easier to do this before the arms, but I didn't notice it until afterwards. Now for his head, I'm going to be grabbing this one here from the Corpse Grinder Cult. Another option would be to use one from pretty much any of the Age of Sigmar Blazer Corn kits but I don't have access to any of those right now, and I'm impatient, so I'm going to edit this one. Taking my clippers and then my knife, I am going to trim off the horn bit at the top of this helmet. I like the face part of it, but the horns didn't really do it for me. Instead, I'm going to take these two curved horn things from the Corpse Grinder kit, normally go around the neck, I believe. With a trim to the bottom of them, they can be carefully attached to either side of the helmet. Finally, I'm going to take a skull from the Citadel Skulls kit and glue it in between the horns. A Cornate follower should always have plenty of skulls. Before attaching it to the body, however, I will need to add a little bit of putty to the neck area, as the head was sitting a bit low, and this would prop it up a little so it didn't look too silly. We take a little ball, squidge it into place, and then gently push the head in until we get the neck hole about the right size. This can be let to dry, and once it is set, it can be glued into place with some super glue. Now, after I finished the head, I took myself a slight break and managed to injure myself, resulting in my hand being strapped up. I tried to continue, but this made life a little difficult, so the project got put on hold a while. Anyways, the next thing I added was a backpack. One from the Chaos Space Marines would have been ideal, but I didn't have any spares lying around. So I cracked open my newly repaired 3D printer and printed this one out. It has some nice skulls on it, so it's quite fitting. With this part being resin, I would need to use super glue, however, to attach it to the back. For his right shoulder, I'm going to use another 3D printed part, this time a stand-in proxy for a regular Chaos Space Marine shoulder pad, as I didn't have any of those either. This one has a World Eater symbol on it. Not sure they would have had any Primaris, but hey, maybe he found the pad lying around somewhere when he decided to go berserk and figured it fitted. So to attach this, I would need to unfortunately snip off another one of the spikes from the chest piece. As a final addition, once my thumb had healed to the point that I could use it again, I'm going to use some of this nice model chain to add some chains to his left arm. Using some super glue to attach this metal, I can attach it roughly around the shoulder area before wrapping it around a few times, adding glue where necessary to keep it in place. I wrapped this from the shoulder all the way to the wrist area before cutting it off about a centimeter or two longer than the wrist. This can then be glued to the base of his weapon. The World Eaters were gladiators originally, so they had a habit of chaining their weapons to themselves, so it kind of fits there.
So next up will be a little bit of basing and some paint. And here he is, a Primaris Corn Berserker. I painted him up in the colors of the World Eaters, or at least a close approximation. Although I did forget to do the base rim before I took his beauty shots. Ah well, it'll be fine. So this gentleman here is going to be a squad leader, and as of such, I've done quite a lot of adjustments to him. For the rest of the squad, I'm probably gonna just assemble the rest of the corpse grinders, just adding some shoulder pads, backpacks, and they'd be a pretty decent proxy for a berserker. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, then maybe hit the like and subscribe buttons. And a big thank you to all those that have done so already. It really helps the channel out. Comments are always welcome too, and I try to respond to them as often as I can. So until the next video, stay safe and have a good one all.